Hi guys. <clears throat> it is a dark, gray, gloomy yuck. Just time to go back to bed. Monday morning here at uh, Bugs in a Jar Farm outside of Ithaca, New York, where it is now Monday morning. All right, the first Monday morning of October 2020. I think that's somewhere around October 5th, 2020. And uh, yes, I am Sam Mitchell. This is my little co-pilot. Sancho Panza, and, and guys, I, I'm, I'm going to try to remember what channel I am on uh, as I review the new Netflix documentary, uh, you know, the new David Attenborough Doomed Planet, I think it's called Doomed Planet or something like that. Anyway, it's <clears throat> being... Uh, this 90-minute documentary, uh, David Attenborough's most unflinchingly honest assessment of how doomed we are, at least for the first hour of it. It's 90 minutes long, and <clears throat> if you don't have a subscription to Netflix, guys, it's very easy to get a free month so just go to netflix.com and sign up for their free one month uh, subscription <clears throat> uh, if you want to watch this thing. And, and I do recommend that Doomers watch this uh, for a, a couple of reasons. I, I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it, <clears throat> it, it's, it, you know, this is so hard for a Doomer to review Doomed Planet, or whatever the title of it really is called. Uh, it, it's, it, if, if you were to stop the thing uh, two-thirds of the way through, it would be a thumbs up. Uh, but then it goes, it, it, it's, the, it's the last third of it, which is actually the most uh, difficult for a Doomer to watch. So, <clears throat> first, let, let's look at the good points. Well, can you call an, a 93-year-old man who knows better than anyone on the planet, as well or better than anybody on this planet, David Attenborough knows damn well that we're doomed and that we are not coming out of this. And for the first hour, he does a, a, an admirable job. I, I mean, good for you, Sir David, and good for you, Netflix, uh, for, for printing this for the first hour. You know, this 93-year-old man who has been studying the, the ongoing collapse of this planet for almost 100 years now, uh, spells it out how doomed we are. Uh, he, he spends one hour uh, spelling out that we're screwed and the reason for it. Uh, the most honest assessment of why this planet, uh, this collapsing planet, is in the dire shape that it is in, and that is because of humans. There is one reason, and one reason only, we are in the middle of the sixth mass extinction that is going to take us down along with all of our fellow earthlings. And he, and, and he points this out to anybody who is unclear on the concept. It is humans. This is planet of the humans. Uh, as he says, we have, and I think I, this is a direct quote, we have utter, we humans have utterly destroyed the world 
that he was born into in 1937, and we were well on our way in 1937. So what he does is he spends about an hour bringing us up, to, you know, from 1937 to 2020, showing uh, the downward spiral of life on Earth over his lifetime. Uh, so it's a good setup. Uh, he pulls no punches. He really doesn't. I, I, I mean, the guy, in, in plain, unambiguous English, uh, and his uh, little grandfatherly voice uh, lets you know the planet has been utterly destroyed since since 1937, if not before. Uh, and we are the planet of the humans. And then he spends about two minutes uh, looking ahead over the next 93 years or so that based on the trajectory with the downward trajectory we are on, over since he was born, it, and then looking ahead the next 93 years, I guess, if we continue on the trajectory we are on, on the downward spiral, we will create an uninhabitable planet in the next 93 years at the, at the outside. Planet Earth will be uninhabitable for all higher life forms, including humans. Now, of course, this is assuming that we're on our present downward spiral, and the downward spiral does not escalate exponentially. So he takes a look at that, spends about two minutes uh, making these doomsday predictions uh, of, of where we're going to go. And, and th th there's nothing in here that's going to be new to anybody, uh, you know, the few people on this planet tuning into a YouTube channel called Collapse Chronicles. Uh, th th there's no new information, but at least we have some video, some, some pretty pictures uh, of how doomed we are. So it is, uh, it, it, it's, it's tough to watch, uh, but, the, but, but as I say, there's nothing new in it. We all know that we're doomed, and we all know the reason for it. Uh, so, so, I mean, it, it, it's tough to watch, but is it, is it good news that uh, David Attenborough on Netflix is sharing the message that, uh, that the Doomers have been sharing for so long. But that's not the most difficult part of the whole documentary to watch. It's the last 30 minutes. So right after he announces that uh, we have utterly destroyed this planet now, and over the balance of this century, we are going to create an uninhabitable planet. He sits there with a straight face and you hear the music change in the last act, in, in act three, uh, and, and here it comes where, where David Attenborough looks straight at the camera and for 30 minutes lies through his teeth. It, it, it is beyond apocaloptimism. It, it is beyond uh, it is beyond hopium. David Attenborough, uh, it, unless he has gone completely senile, uh, is absolutely shameless. It, it, it hurt me. It, it, uh, it's embarrassing. Uh, this old, diluted old fart is 
absolutely shameless in, in his uh, in his spewing this utter unadulterated BS. Uh, how we are going to turn this freight train around? Uh, you, you know, it, it it really hurts my ears. Uh, if they had stopped the video uh, at 60 minutes, it would have been the best, uh, most honest 60-minute portrayal on the mainstream media by one of the most trusted voices on the planet uh, about environmental issues uh, and just left it at that. We're screwed. And then, of course, he comes to here it comes, but... It's not all doom and gloom. That is where the that is where the big bright green lot pack of lies begins. It is not all doom and gloom. I got some bad news for you, David Attenborough. You know damn well it is all doom and gloom. Every last shred of it is all doom and gloom. And then uh, for the last 30 minutes, every single uh, statement out of that, e either diluted, senile, 93-year-old fart, or, or uh, what, what, is, what is this? Every single statement out of his mouth. Uh, I, I, I could play, if it wasn't for a copyright violation, uh, every single statement. Anybody with a brain uh, could stop, could play one statement out of out of that out of that liar's mouth, uh, stop it, and, and do a thirty-minute rant uh, on why what uh, David Attenborough just said was a lie. And uh, of course, a lot of the thirty minutes is uh, is uh, talking. Uh, a, a, about renewable energy or the Green New Deal, whatever you want to call it. Uh, how uh, the green, clean, renewable energy is going to turn this freight train around and allow humanity to rewild, rewild the planet. Uh, it, 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 anybody uh, who who wants, uh, you know, I, I can't believe I'm even talking to you guys about this. It, it is ABC's Watch Planet of the Humans uh, for a reality check uh, on that, or whenever the Derek Jensen and Lear Keith's new book, Bright Green Lies. I mean, it, it, it was more painful to listen to David Attenborough spewing this crap out of his mouth. And, and, and of course, when, when, you, when you dig deeper and deeper into this onion, uh, you know, if you suspend disbelief or whatever uh, that, that term is and, and, and pretend like uh, these techno-utopians uh, are, 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 are going to save the planet by getting fossil fuels out of the equation, I, I mean, suspend your disbelief that we have the scientific ability, that we have the political will, and that we have the individual consumer and lifestyle uh, choices will to do this. Uh, what is never mentioned by anybody is the absolutely worst thing we could do for this planet is to give humans an unlimited uh, renewable uh, energy supply. Uh, if you want, if you want to take the destruction of planet Earth by humans straight, a, accelerate that. Uh, on an exponential scale, get rid of fossil fuels. It is the inefficiency 
of fossil fuels is the only thing holding humans back for uh, from you know completing uh, their slaughter and destruction of this planet the absolute stupidest thing we, we could do to save this planet it, it, it is to produce uh, some sort of limitless energy supply for us bloodthirsty savages and uh, <laughs> so and, and, and then the and then the most twisted irony of all, uh, you know, at one point, so so he announces, "I am going to show you how we're going to turn this freight train around, and that there is one way to turn this freight train around, and that is if humans are the problem, get rid of the humans, remove." the problem and then ironically he he begins and ends this documentary it's bookended by him uh, over there in Chernobyl and uh, this is I have said if there is if I have one tiny little shred of, of hopium and apocalyptimism. If I have one cell still coursing through my body of optimism, it is Chernobyl. Is the most, it is the only bright spot on this planet is ground zero Chernobyl. And, 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 and there is, uh, and, and, and I don't know if this was just some, uh, was this just some clever, subversive subterfuge that uh, I, I'm trying to give David, this old man, the benefit of the doubt here that what he was doing kind of wink, wink, nudge, nudge after talking this unadulterated crap for half an hour, he ends up in Chernobyl. The, the site of, you know, one of the biggest, supposedly, one of the biggest ecological disasters on this planet 30 years ago, and he shows what happens when you take humans out of the equation when you declare some where a human exclusion zone that mother nature will muddle on through and uh, you can see what Chernobyl looks like today where we have you know it showed wolves and uh, well, we got over there wolves and bears and moose and uh, wild horses. Uh, Chernobyl is one of the most biodiverse spots on planet Earth in the middle of a nuclear catastrophe zone. That nuclear explosion in Chernobyl was the best thing to happen to uh, our fellow Earthlings over there. Uh, and, and Mother Nature is taking back. This, this proves my contention over and over again that our fellow Earthlings would rather literally deal with the nuclear fallout than just deal with humans going about their daily lives. It is, it is every one of us just going about our daily lives it is the reason that uh, this planet's in, in, in the shape it's in. And uh, so maybe that was David Collins, because uh, imagine David Attenborough uh, and, and Netflix suggesting there is one way and one way only to save this planet. That is to make this planet a human exclusion zone by whatever means necessary is to make humans go extinct until uh, every last human being on this planet has been excluded from this planet. Uh, every one of our fellow earthlings needs to sleep with one eye open tonight. 
and uh, and and just the these uh, the probably the most painful uh, of all of this was. Uh, you know, David Attenborough talking how uh, about how we're going to save the planet, showing clips of him at the United Nations, the IMF, and at Davos, Switzerland. Uh, I guess uh, David Attenborough has not heard the George Carlin routine about it's one big club and you ain't in it. And, and, and this is the, the most, uh, one of the most disturbing elements. Does David Attenborough believe for one second uh, that the United Nations, the International Monetary Fund, and the Davos Gang, uh, you know, he was showing the famous uh, walruses, uh, falling off the cliffs, uh, piling up bloody piles of dead walruses at Davos, Switzerland, and, 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 and these uh, planet eaters at Davos crying these crocodile tears. Let me tell you how much the billionaires at Davos, Switzerland give a damn uh, 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 about uh, mountains of rotting, bloody walrus carcasses piling up uh, in the ice-free Arctic. Uh, the, David, you're being used. It is uh, David Attenborough playing right into the hands of these planet eaters and uh, with, with them acting like uh, you know, anytime these world leaders get together and, and act like uh, they're going to do a damn thing to save this planet, and, and for and, and for David Attenborough to suggest that the United Nations, the IMF, and the Davos gang are uh, we're, we're going to we're, we're going to leave it up to them to save this planet. Please. And, and so this is the, the ultimate, uh, you know, as much as anything else that uh, we're doomed, is that, we, that the, the greatest opportunity in history was squandered. Uh, they needed to, to uh, show the first 60 minutes of that, and then they, had, then they should have cut directly to the Garden of Eden that is downtown Chernobyl, and, uh, and, and David Attenborough uh, could come on and say, uh, it's not all doom and gloom because we still have Chernobyl. Uh, is, is the reason it's not only not all doom and gloom and I'm gonna show you how to bring back our fellow earthlings and that is to make this planet a human exclusion zone you can see what a ground zero nuclear catastrophe looks like after only 30 years of, uh, uh, of making uh, Chernobyl a human exclusion zone, get humans off of this planet and, uh, you know, they're still going to have to deal with all these tipping points set in motion. And uh, it, when, if, if we make humans uh, go extinct, but of course, uh, we all know it ain't going to happen. We're never going to have David Attenborough or Netflix, at least, at least uh, unless it's in a uh, fictional uh, a fictional character in Netflix suggesting that we need to make this planet a human exclusion zone. We are never going to have David Attenborough, the United Nations, IMF, the Davos gang, 
uh, look us in the damn face and say there is one way to save this planet, and that is to go Chernobyl and make this planet a human exclusion zone. And, 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 and that is the most sobering takeaway uh, that the, this, this big, bright green lie uh, it, it, it is gonna it is gonna take us right on down the toilet. Anyway, I gotta wrap this up uh, now because uh, I have to go to the DMV and uh, try to get some New York license plates on my gas-sucking truck. David Attenborough, I'd like to slap you. I'll leave it at that. Bye, guys.